while the world turns the spotlights to failed attempts of fixing broken economic systems, a hunger crisis is spreading across the globe. Amid a sanitary outbreak that is devastating countries politically and economically, and as a consequence of catastrophic natural disasters, recent reports are indicating that we're about to see famines of biblical proportions. Countries that once eradicated the dreadful effects of malnutrition are witnessing a recurrence of high poverty rates, meaning that a larger portion of their population is now facing deep food insecurity. From Asia to Africa to South America, the hunger crisis is leaving a troubling track, and specialists are warning that if the world leaders don't take action soon enough, the repercussion of the widespread food shortages will become more fatal than the current viral outbreak. For that reason, today we've decided to expose this concerning reality that almost no one seems to be talking about. So keep with us, and please give this video a thumbs up and share it with those around you to help raise awareness about this issue. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel to keep updated with future videos. The Executive Director of UN's World Food Program, WFB, David Beasley, has repeatedly warned that in addition to the damages that emerged with the global health crisis, the world could face multiple famines of biblical proportions that would likely cause 300,000 casualties per day, triggering a hunger crisis. Now, this critical situation is already a reality for many countries. A couple of months ago, while speaking at an online briefing broadcast by the UN on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, the WFP chief disclosed the distressing fact that 821 million people are currently battling with food insecurity. If we don't prepare and act now to secure access, avoid funding shortfalls, and disruptions to trade, he said, the outcome could lead to a humanitarian catastrophe in a short few months. Millions of civilians living in conflict-scarred nations, including many women and children, face being pushed to the brink of starvation. With the specter of famine a very real and dangerous possibility, he added. The briefing titled, Protection of Civilians from Conflict-Induced Hunger, which was coincidentally released with the Global Report on Food Crises 2020, included an examination of the conditions of 55 countries where 135 million people are dealing with a crisis-level food insecurity. And that doesn't take into account the impacts of the sanitary outbreak, which response has been creating an excruciating trade-off between saving lives or livelihoods, or in a worst-case scenario, saving people from the current viral cases to have them die from hunger. On the basis of research from WFP, Beasley revealed that as the virus spreads, an additional 130 million people could be pushed to the brink of starvation by the end of 2020. That's a total of 265 million people. Together with the Director General of the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations, FAO, Q Dong Yu, and the Secretary General of the Norwegian Refugee Council, Jan Egeland, Beasley added, WFP offers a lifeline to nearly 100 million people, up from about 80 million people just a few years ago. This includes about 30 million people who literally depend on us to stay alive. If we can't reach these people with the life-saving assistance they need, our analysis shows that 300,000 people could pass away from hunger every single day over a three-month period. According to the Global Food Crises Report, the most aggravating situation is happening in countries across Africa and the Middle East due to the abrupt shutdowns that accentuated poverty. And more people are expected to be fatally affected by the economic impacts of the viral outbreak than from the virus itself. 
in countries like Afghanistan, the Democratic Republic of Congo, South Sudan, Syria, Yemen, and Zimbabwe, national health systems are already overstretched with an alarming dearth of equipment, medicines, and trained staff. Such countries are among the nine countries which account for more than 40% of stunted children, the report outlines. And Beasley highlighted that 1.6 billion children and young people are currently out of school due to lockdown closures. Nearly 370 million children are missing out on nutritious school meals. You can only imagine when children don't get the nutrition they need, their immunity goes down. The Global Food Crises Report also points out that health crisis aside, of the 135 million people suffering acute hunger, 77 million are in countries affected by conflict, 34 million are in places that are subject to climate shocks, and 24 million are in places affected by humanitarian crises. Furthermore, a recent article by Bloomberg Quint described the soul-crushing situation of a 34-year-old Guatemalan construction worker who suddenly lost his job amid the sanitary crisis. And as a result, he couldn't feed his family anymore. Matilde Alonso sat up all alone till late that night, his mind racing and fought back tears. He had six mouths to feed, no income, and no hope of receiving anything beyond the most meager of crisis support checks some $130 from the cash-strapped government. Today, Alonso said, breakfast, lunch, and dinner all look about the same in his house in El Chocotillo. Maybe a tortilla with salt. Maybe a tortilla with beans. Maybe a bowl of rice and beans. We used to eat meat. Now there's no meat. We used to eat chicken. Now there is no chicken. We used to drink milk. Now, there is no milk. Even bread, he said, is off the menu, the article reports. Just as Alonso, tens of millions are suffering from food insecurity in Latin America. The viral outbreak only uncovered the fragility of the global economic status, especially in this region, where a resurgence of poverty is creating a tidal wave of hunger. Even though throughout the past decades, most of these countries had almost eradicated that kind of malnutrition. The article asserted that from Buenos Aires to Mexico City, families have been skipping on meals and replacing fresh produce for starchy and sugary items. Differently from the US and Europe, Latin American countries cannot count on the same amount of federal aid and millions of workers labor in the informal economy and are usually left out of assistance programs. The WFP report suggests that the Latin American and Caribbean nations in which it operates will witness a spike of approximately 270% in the number of people suffering from extreme food insecurity over the coming months. According to the WFP spokesperson in Panama, Nora Restrepo, that surge from 4.3 million before the health crisis started to spread worldwide to 16 million in recent projections, will likely be the most severe in human history and more than twice the estimated global growth rate. The growth of the middle class happened gradually in these regions, boosted by an expansion in commodity prices from 2000 to 2014, which reduced poverty rate from 27 to 12 percent. However, as demand for such materials decreased, it was a rapid reversal that drove Argentina to a deep recession and Venezuela to a calamitous economic situation. But even during the growth period, these countries were dealing with other underlying problems, such as economic inequality, racial tensions, and authority abuse, whose pressure sparked mass protests last year with hundreds of thousands taking to the streets in Colombia, Chile, and Ecuador. The occurrence of a viral outbreak has pushed these economies over the edge, and the precariousness of the situation led millions to move from relatively comfortable lives 
to not knowing where their next meal is coming from, Bloomberg emphasizes. The difference between being poor and going poor is brutal, said Jose Aguilar, founder of Reactivemos La Esperanza, which supports 100 families in Costa Rica and is trying to reach more people. When you're middle class and you have food, access to education, and are accustomed to a certain quality of life, and all of a sudden it's taken away from you through no fault of your own, that hits families really hard. The head of Bancos de Alimentos de Mexico, Maria Teresa Garcia, this economic and health crisis is just starting and it'll result in the largest number of people living in food scarcity in recent times. This crisis is going to leave a mark for a long, long time. It is already possible to see that the other parts of the world are entering this process of reversal. In June, the World Bank alerted that the health crisis consequences could undo several years of progress for the poor in less developed nations such as India and Nigeria their forecasts show that as many as 100 million people are likely to fall into extreme poverty. That is to say, there will be an abysmal surge in food inequality, with possibly 132 million more people than previously projected going hungry in 2020, setting an increase that might be more than triple than what was even seen in any other century, according to UN estimates and Latin America is going to lead that surge. Just as in most countries, the massive upswing in hunger seen in Latin American nations has nothing to do with insufficient supply. In reality, the region has fertile plains and valleys which produce grains, fruits, and proteins, being an agricultural powerhouse that helps to feed the world. The main problem brought by the outbreak is whether those laid-off workers will be able to afford to eat. The most recent piece by Michael Snyder, reposted on Zero Hedge website, poses the following heart-wrenching question. What would you do if you didn't have any food to feed your family? He tells his readers that he once had a friend who is a hardcore prepper tell him that his worst nightmare would be for his daughter to tell him that she was hungry and he didn't have anything to give her. Unfortunately, this is a situation many American workers are already facing. Though not in the same unsettling manner Latin workers have been dealing with in their countries. For the time being, the U.S. seems to be in a better shape, but there have been alarming shortages of certain items and many grocery stores have been finding it very difficult to restock their shelves. Now, grocery stores across the United States are stocking up on products to avoid shortages during a second wave of coronavirus, reported CNN. When the mainstream media starts acknowledging that shortages are on the horizon, it's a sign things are about to get much worse. The report specified that Household products, including paper towels and Clorox wipes, have been difficult to find at times during the pandemic. If grocery stores aren't stocked up and prepared for a second wave this winter, runs on products and shortages could happen again. Furthermore, noting that the food prices will likely increase due to the greedy ambitions of a handful of billionaires who are profiting at the expense of workers' financial pain, which denies them being able to afford basic goods. CNN stated that, with high demand for groceries comes higher prices in the aisles. Since March, more Americans have been eating at home. Their grocery expenses have been growing. This is partly due to the fact that food manufacturers and grocery stores are rethinking pricing strategies now because demand is surging. What is more, on top of the threatening food shortages and soaring prices, other determinants may contribute to the disruption of the food supply chain, since many U.S. farmers have gone bankrupt during this downturn. They revealed that federal payments have actually done very little to keep them afloat. In fact, the initial payments under the Food Assistance Program 
which provided $16 billion in direct support and $3 billion in purchases, disclosed an uneven distribution of financial aid, and most of the payments were directed to large, industrialized farms. Another distressing event that adds to all these factors is the major natural disasters that happened this year in agricultural areas of many countries, but most concerningly in China, where crops were wiped out on a massive scale, leaving a dent in global food production. For now, most Americans still have access to plenty of food, and we shouldn't take that for granted because global conditions are swiftly changing, and we probably should take this window of opportunity to start preparing for the very challenging times that are ahead of us. If you liked today's video, you should check out Michael Snyder's Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, now available on Amazon. His book is a must-read about the U.S. economic collapse and will provide you out-of-the-box insights about the world around us. And please, feel free to leave a comment on this comment section down below with your insights about what is coming next in this 21st century depression.